As baristas, we like to think that our technique is what makes the difference. We tell people that making great coffee is a combination of art and science, but is that really true with tamping? Today, we are gonna find out. We'll answer the most common questions that people have about tamping, and we'll run through some practical tips on how to get the best results with your coffee. Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm from the Coffee Science and Education Center. Now, when I'm training baristas on the fundamentals of making espresso, a couple of questions about tamping keep coming up. They wanna know, how hard do I need to tamp? Does tamping level really matter? Now, some people say that you need to tamp really hard, while others say the pressure doesn't matter all that much. Now, we don't wanna make any assumptions, so we put some lab coats on, performed a series of tests, and got ourselves some data. But before we get into that, I should clarify that we are not looking into different techniques for distributing the coffee grounds. That is an important topic, and we'll take a look at that next time. Today, we are just focusing on the act of tamping itself. Now, for our first test, we want to find out if tamping harder changes the flow rate of the espresso, or if it improves the consistency from shot to shot. To make sure our results were consistent, we used the puck press. It is an automated tamping machine which tamps an exact pressure every time. We pulled a total of 25 shots of espresso, 10, 20, and 30 kilos of tamping pressure, and we averaged out the results. We used three different styles of espresso blend for these tests to make sure the origins and the roast profile weren't a factor. The end result was that the higher tamping pressure made no difference to the extraction. The extraction times weren't longer for the 30 kilo tamping, nor were they shorter at the 10 kilo, and they weren't any more consistent from shot to shot. They were exactly the same. So if tamping harder doesn't make a difference, then what is the point of tamping at all? Well, it's really about removing all the air pockets and making sure that the water moves evenly through the bed of coffee. If water does find an easy opportunity to work through one of these gaps, this is what we call channeling. We can see this happening if we don't tamp the coffee at all. You'll see holes in the bed of used coffee and the espresso will flow more quickly and it will probably taste pretty nasty too. So our goal here isn't to press down hard. It's more about providing a compact surface and to make sure that the water does its job moving through that bed of coffee as evenly as possible. Now, most barista trainers will be careful to point out that you should always tamp level with the basket. But we wanted to test if it had a measurable effect to the flow and the consistency of our espresso shots when we don't get it right. Unfortunately, our robotic tamper only tamps level, so we had to use some good old fashioned humans for these tests. For this test, we brewed a series of espresso shots using 10 degrees and then another set at 20 degrees. And we compared these espressos using a level tamp of the same pressure to see how they would compare. This time, the differences were obvious straight away. The shots made using an angle tamp had a less consistent flow than the shots made with a level tamp. The used coffee also showed obvious signs of channeling. And more importantly, in our blind taste test, the espresso made with the angle tamp just didn't taste as good. Now the negative results were more obvious at 20 degrees than even at 10 degrees. So the conclusion is pretty obvious. The more level you keep your tamping technique, the better your coffee will be. Now, okay, with our testing out of the way, let's run through some practical side of tamping techniques so that you can get consistent results with your coffee. And so you don't end up with the repetitive strain injury, the RSI. Now, the purpose of tamping is to firmly and evenly pack the coffee for extraction. With this in mind, the quality of your movement and tamp is what we are looking for here. Make sure that you hold the tamp in such a way that it's not gonna put any pressure on your wrist. For most people, it's best to hold the tamp in your hand like a tennis racket or like a microphone, if that's more your thing. Now you wanna wrap four fingers around the handle and place your thumb on the base as support. It's usually best not to hold the tamp like you're stamping a letter. That is just a recipe for disaster and a whole lot of pain down the track. Now, if this feels uncomfortable, I'd also recommend this method as an option. I like to put my fingertips to the edge of the tamp. It's where I'm touching the tamp and the edge of the basket whilst tamping. This feel and my eyesight on the connection of the tamp to the basket really helps me know if I am tamping level and correctly. Next, 
I'd recommend that you rest the group handle against the corner of the bench. Try avoid using the spouts because that is a recipe for damaging those or even picking up any loose grit that might be on the bench and then transferring that to your cup of espresso via the extraction. Then I want you to stand side onto the bench. Get your elbow up and this will ensure that your wrist is straight and will cause you to engage your shoulder. Remember, as we showed earlier, you don't need a lot of pressure. Just a gentle lean with your body. Enough pressure to crush a kiwi fruit is plenty. A couple of quick notes on technique. Some people feel they have to tap the handle after tampening to loosen the coffee from the walls of the basket. Apart from damaging the tamp and the handle, it can create gaps at the point of impact, which makes channeling more likely and certainly more obvious at times. If you really are concerned about the coffee stuck to the wall of the basket, you can also get a slightly larger tamp, which fits more closely to the basket that you're using. This will make sure that the coffee is tamped all the way to the edge right from the start. Also, some people add a twist to the tamp movement to polish the better coffee. Now, to be fair, this is unlikely to cause any issues with your extraction, but it's not an essential movement to make, particularly if you're making hundreds of coffees a day. At the end of the day, you want to tamp firmly until you feel a good amount of resistance and call it a day. Another common tamping idea crops up often in training sessions. They say, Josh, I could change my tamp to change my tamp pressure to increase or decrease my shot times accordingly. The root of the issue is that ambient conditions have caused your coffee grind profiles to change. So therefore, it is best practice to adjust your grinder and stay on recipe and to keep your tamping pressure as relatively consistent as you can. That's our roundup on tamping technique. Now this is just a start on a series of videos looking into the details and the science of espresso technique. Next time, we are going to dive into the rabbit hole of distribution. Do you really need a special tool or a certain technique to distribute the coffee before tamping? Or are these just a waste of time? So tell me in the comments, what are your questions around tamping? I'd love to hear what you think. And I'll see you guys next time.